Hey guys, it's Medicos as Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our anatomy playlist. Today, it's time to talk about the skin. The integument, the largest organ of your body. Don't forget to check my anatomy playlist here on YouTube. What are the functions of the skin, medicosis? It covers and protects your body from damages, all kinds of damage, including mechanical, chemical, thermal, and even osmotic. If you do not think that osmotic damage is harmful, just remember the fact that many of the antibiotics, especially the cell wall synthesis inhibitors, and the cell membrane disruptors can annihilate many a bacteria, particularly because they damage the cell wall of the bacteria and or the cell membrane, rendering the bacteria vulnerable to osmotic damage. Your skin is important for thermoregulation. In cold temperatures, vasoconstrict to keep the heat inside. But when the weather is so hot, you vasodilate and sweat and evaporate. Your skin is important for water balance. It's a source of excretion of water, salts, and urea. They go with the sweat. Your skin is a sensory organ. We'll talk about this in neuro. Not just because of the nerve endings, but because of sensory organs. Your skin has metabolic functions, especially with vitamin D. Your skin has immune function. Does anyone remember Langerhans or dendritic cells? Let's talk about your skin and vitamin D. Sunlight is here, but before it, you need liver and gut. Then in the skin, cholecalciferol. Liver will make it 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol. Kidney will make it 1 and 25 dihydroxy cholecalciferol, which is the active form of vitamin D. As for the dendritic cells, they are antigen presenting cells. They present the antigen, which is a piece of the bacterium, for example, to your lymphocytes so that your lymphocytes can attack the foreign invader and they can remember the same antigen so that the next attack to the second exposure is faster and stronger. That was the function of your skin. Let's talk about the structure from the outside to the inside, from the superficial to the deep. Epidermis, then dermis, then hypodermis. What does derma mean? Skin. That's why you go to a dermatologist, also known as people who cannot use a stethoscope, just like freaking psychiatrists. Do you remember the building unit of your body? It's the cell. Bunch of cells make tissue. Lots of tissue make an organ. Many organs make a system. Systems perform your body functions. Speaking of tissue, we have four types of tissue. Epithelium, connective muscle and nerve. Let's talk about the epithelium because this is the epidermis of your skin. The epithelium said, I cover the body and I line its cavities. Doesn't that sound filthy? I stand atop the basement membrane, just like your epidermis. Specifically, the basal layer of your epidermis is standing upon the basement membrane. And the basement membrane is between the epithelium, i.e. epidermis, and the dermis, i.e. connective tissue. So the epidermis of your skin is epithelium. Your skin has stratified squamous epithelium with keratin on top of it. Hey, medicosis, where did the epidermis of my skin come from? The epidermis of your skin came from the ectoderm, specifically the surface ectoderm. But hey, medicosis, how about the dermis, which is beneath the epidermis? The dermis came from the mesoderm, which is inside of the ectoderm. Exterior versus interior. So your epidermis is derived from the ectoderm, dermis, and hypodermis from the mesoderm. Oh, by the way, the hypodermis is the same thing as the superficial fascia. More on that in another video. So from the superficial to the deep, epidermis, dermis, hypodermis. Epidermis is epithelium, thick and keratinized for protection and prevention of fluid loss. Does it have some nerve endings? Yes, it has some. Does it have capillaries? No. Capillaries and blood vessels are in the dermis, not in the epidermis. The deepest layer of the epidermis, the stratum basale, is standing upon the basement membrane. And the basement membrane is at the dermoepidermal junction, just like where the antibodies of bullous pemphigoid attack at the dermoepidermal junction, exactly where most of your melanin is dermoepidermal junction. 
Coming up next or coming down next is dermis, connective tissue, sweat glands, hairy follicles, blood vessels, capillaries, sensory nerve endings, lots of them. And beneath the dermis you find the hypodermis or the superficial fascia or the subcutaneous tissue, which is made of fibrofatty tissue, fibrous and fatty. Epidermis layer, from top to bottom, from the superficial to the deep, stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, stratum basale, and the basement membrane. And then you have the dermis. Dermis has papillae layer and reticular layer. The former is loose, the latter is dense. As dense as the deposits of membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis type 2. Skin structure, epidermis, dermis, hypodermis, epidermis, stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, stratum basale. The corneum is the cornea or the horny layer, lots of keratinocytes, dead keratinized cells. Then stratum lucidum, clear, hairless, homogeneous cells, followed by stratum granulosum, this is the most superficial living cell. Anything above it is dead. This dead skin is the one that you towel off after your shower. As you dry yourself with a towel, you are removing all of that dead skin, which were transferred from you to your towel, which you will use again the next time before washing it. Because you do not do your laundry, you contaminate a piece of melanin. I'm just joking, sorry. Wash your towels. The stratum granulosum cells are alive. As they die and lose their nucleus, they go up and become loose them, then cornea. Next, stratum spinosum, many layers. Spinosum means prickle, squamous. Layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. Here you'll find your Langerhans cell, which is dendritic cell, which is an antigen presenting cell. And the last one is the stem cell, the dividing cell, the mother of all cells of the epidermis, stratum basale or basal cell layer for creation and regeneration. Underneath the basal layer is the basement membrane at the dermoepidermal junction. Next, dermis, papillary, loose, followed by reticular, dense, loose connective tissue, and then followed by dense reticular layer, which has collagenous bundles arranged in parallel rows known as cleavage lines, which will be the topic of the next video. Under the dermis, there is the hypodermis, superficial fascia, connective tissue, fibrofatty, fatty and fibro. Some clinical correlation, skin cancer, squamous cell carcinoma is cancer, of the epidermis, especially here, stratum spinosum, the prickle cell layer that have gazillion layers. Conversely, the basal cell carcinoma, another skin cancer, is a cancer of the stratum basale, that's why it's called basal cell carcinoma. Give me some keratin pearls, give me some palisading action. So now you know about two types of skin cancer, but wait, there is a third one. Malignant melanoma, which is a cancer of the melanocytes, the cells that make melanin. That's why melanoma looks brown. Melanoma is cancerous, of course. What is the benign equivalent of melanoma? It's called anevus. Also brown, same story, but benign. Not malignant. Medicine is so good once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Thermoregulation is an important function for the skin. If it's hot, vasodilate and sweat. If it's cold, vasoconstrict and keep it in. Brown fat is not good to an engineer. Why not? Because it's less efficient. What does that mean in engineering terms, in physics term? A less efficient light bulb is a light bulb that emits less light and more heat. So this is a fat that makes more heat, which can keep you warm in the winter. The blood supply of the skin is not in the epidermis, it's in the dermis and below. In the dermis you have superficial plexus, you have a deeper plexus, and between them you have the arteriovenous anastomosis. Ana means up, stoma means mouth or opening, and osis is a condition. It's a condition of opening it up, connecting everything together, shunting it quickly. If you take it too far, you can get a high output cardiac failure, 
also known as a hyperdynamic circulation, where everything is fast, everything is dilated, everything is distended. If you want to learn more about types of shock, I have a high yields surgery course on my website. Your skin is a sensory organ. We have somatic sensations, autonomic sensations, autonomic functions, etc. You want to take it to the next level? All right, evaporation from your skin is an endothermic process. What the flip does that mean? Endo means in. It's a substance that absorbs energy in towards the inside. Here is another pearl. Your sweat contains salt. No kidding, already I know this. But did you remember that salt raises the boiling point of water? Oh yeah, so what? This will make it harder for you to boil in the sun when it's hot outside. So this salt is important. Want another pearl? What's the name of the disease? Where the mother will tell you, Doctor, my baby's skin is so salty to the taste. Like what? Super extra salty? Yeah, it's called cystic fibrosis because of a problem in the chloride channels. Here is a fourth pearl. Your body weight is 60% water. Two thirds of your body weight is water. Why water? Why not oil? Why not liquid mercury? Why not any other fluid? Because water has the highest specific heat among fluids. What the flip does that mean? It means it's very hard to boil the water and it's very hard to freeze the water. That's why you're not gonna boil at the equator and you're not gonna freeze in Alberta. Within limits, of course. What's the only part of my skin that will let the water out? Only your sweat glands. How about the rest of the skin? It's impermeable to water. Hence, osmotic function to keep your body safe from osmotic damage. That's why you need a sweat gland to penetrate your skin. We take it to the next level over here. If the entire skin were permeable to water, you would die from osmotic damage. If your skin were impermeable to water with no sweat glands, you might die from the sunlight. So to have the best of both worlds, Make the skin impermeable and add a sweat gland that penetrates it. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. If you like this video, you will enjoy my renal physiology course on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com as well as my surgery high yields course. In the next video, we shall talk about the cleavage lines of the skin. So please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.